it is time for the coronavirus to end. Amen. And God has revealed the key, the secret, the power behind the coronavirus. And guess what? It is no match to the power of God. But the thing is, is that we must partner with God in this. And so God is going to release how we need to partner with him in order for coronavirus to be wiped out completely. Hallelujah. So get excited and make sure you share this word because we must be in this together. God moves powerfully when we are united. When we are united and when we believe, when we have faith, when we say no to the voice of fear. Go to Acts chapter 1 verse 2. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord, one accord. They were all on the same page. They were all united in faith, all with one mind, one spirit, one heart. And in that way of unity, they had faith. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were there, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is when the Holy Spirit came. This is when God moves in power. This shows us what happens when we are united and when we believe. God then moves. God waited for everyone to be together, having faith, praying the same thing, their mind on one thing, on the same thing, desiring God to move. And that is when God moved. Faith is so powerful. Many people today have been blinded to the power of faith. When Jesus came on this earth, he moves when people ignite their faith. When they have faith, we see that nothing is impossible. Even people are risen from the dead. And many times we hear him say, he gives them this direction, believe and your child will be healed. Believe and you will be well. Believe and this miracle will happen, but you have to believe. God gives them that direction. So God is all powerful, but he is, is waiting for us to have faith. We are not robots, we are not puppets, but we have to engage, we have to participate in order for God to move. He is paralyzed if we do not have faith. We see this in, in Jesus' hometown. In his hometown, it says in the Bible that he was unable to perform any miracles except for heal a couple people because people had no faith. It says that he was actually amazed. He was astounded by people's lack of faith. That is powerful. This shows us that when faith is missing, we cannot receive the power of God. We cannot receive the miracle. So the supernatural power, the miracle working power of Jesus is available for you today, for us today, for this country today. But if we are like the hometown of Jesus, we will not see his hand. We will not see the supernatural move of God. We will be just like the people of the world where there's no miracle that's possible. But if we decide to have faith, if we choose to believe in our God, not just believe that he exists, but believe that he can do anything Nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing. No miracle is off limits. There is no need to fear at all when you can believe that God can do anything. 
It's simple. And this is what God is asking for us right now. So we need faith, number one. Number two, we need to be united in faith. United in faith. We see what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were all in one accord. They were united together. They were praying to God. They were all desiring him to move in power. And that's when he came. When there is a big move of God, God needs more than just one or two people. When he is going to do a big move, when there is a big scheme of the devil, there needs to be a united body of Christ that will stand in faith together to overcome the greater scheme of the devil. When there is a big scheme of the devil, we must unite together for God's power to be released. When there is a scheme of the devil that affects many people, like coronavirus right now, the way in which it will be overcome is when many of us, the body of Christ, together stand united and believe that God will destroy the coronavirus. When we stand together and do not give in to fear, that is when it will be destroyed. We have to do it together. Acts 4 verse 23. This is the message version. It says, as soon as Peter and John were let go, they went to their friends and told them what the high priests and religious leaders had said. So, Peter and John were just uh, take, they were, they got in trouble by the leaders at that time because they were preaching Jesus. They were being bold and, and the powers of this world were coming against them, but they were released. And so they went and told their friends what the high priests and religious leaders had said. Hearing the report, they lifted their voices in a wonderful harmony of prayer. So it says, in a wonderful harmony in prayer, meaning together, harmony means together, together in prayer, they said, strong God, you made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. By the Holy Spirit, you spoke through the mouth of your servant and our father, David. Why the big noise, nations? Why the mean plots, peoples? Earth's leaders push for position. Potentates meet for summit, summit talks. The God deniers, the Messiah defiers. For in fact, they did meet Herod and Pontius Pilate with nations and peoples, even Israel itself, met in this very city to plot against your holy son, Jesus, the one you made Messiah to carry out the plans you long ago set in motion. And now they're at it again. Take care of their threats and give your servants fearless confidence in preaching your message as you stretch out your hand to us in healings and miracles and wonders done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. While they were praying, the place where they were meeting trembled and shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak God's word with fearless confidence. The whole congregation of believers was united as one, one heart, one mind. So what they're describing today is something that we can relate with today. They are saying, wow, but there is this big attack of the enemy against us. And we don't see an end in sight of this. They let us go today, but man, the devil is really trying hard. That was their reality. But did they run back and tremble in fear and say, oh, I guess we better not preach anymore because there's so many people against us, they'll kill us next time? Did they tremble in fear? Did they give into the voice of fear? No, they acknowledged the reality that the enemy is trying very hard. There is a lot of evil in this world coming through other leaders and people against them, coming with plans against them. But 
they have seen this happen before through Jesus, but yet Jesus was triumphant through it all. We see the verse Romans 5.20, it says, And yet, wherever sin increased, there is more than enough of God's grace to triumph all the more. This is the Passion's translation. In other words, whenever there is a lot of evil, there is absolutely more of God's grace to overpower even the highest level of evil. The very highest level of evil. God's grace is more than enough. It's not just a little bit more to overcome the power of the devil. It's landslides more than the power of the devil. That is a fact. That is our word of God. That is our truth. That's the truth that we've seen evidence of time and time again, from the resurrection of Jesus to the mighty miracles that happened through Moses, the splitting of the Red Sea, the mightier the scheme of the enemy, the mightier the miracle that gave the people victory. Amen. Every time in the Bible that happens, God doesn't fail one time. It's never God that fails, it's only the people's faith that fails them. When people will believe, God will always come through. So we here we see, we see Peter and John, they're acknowledging that there is a large amount of evil attacks coming from the devil through other people at them. They acknowledge it, but they are not full of fear. They say, God, this is what's happening. And they've done this before, but now they're at it again. Take care of their threats and give your servants fearless confidence in preaching your message as you stretch out your hand to us in healings and miracles and wonders done in your name of your holy servant Jesus. So they are speaking full of faith. God, we know that you will stretch out your mighty hand. We know that you will do it. This is the prayer that they had united together. And this prayer of mighty faith in unity is what made God to come through in power. After they prayed this prayer in unity, it says in harmony, they spoke this with full of faith. While they were praying, the place where they were meeting trembled and shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak God's word with fearless confidence, the whole congregation of believers was united as one, one heart, one mind. Number two, go to Acts 16, verse 25 right now. Okay, so what's happening here? Acts 16, verse 25. Paul and Silas, they were being persecuted because of their faith in Jesus, because they were preaching the gospel fearlessly. And the leaders of that time were coming against them. So they were beaten and imprisoned. So fresh from being, from being beaten and put into prison. Now remember also that they were the very first, they were the first disciples, the first round of disciples at this time. So they didn't even have the Bible that we have today to show us how though there's persecution among disciples, among those that preach the gospel, God always comes through, God always delivers them, God always protects them. They didn't even have that example, but they had a strong enough faith. They had tasted and seen the goodness and faithfulness of God so much, so much that their faith was so strong that even though they were beaten in the prison, they did not give in to fear. They did not sit full of blood coming out of their body with whippings and crying and saying, God, you failed us. What's gonna happen to us? We're gonna die. I don't know what this is. I, what's gonna happen? We're in jail now, what now? They are not doubting God. They do not have an ounce of fear. Instead, it says, verse 25, 
But about midnight, when Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, wow, they were united together. The fact that they were praying and singing hymns of praise. This means that they were full of faith. Even though they were stuck in prison, they didn't know what the future would hold. They had uh, blood coming out from their wounds, from being beaten. They are full of faith, praising God, praying together, united. The prisoners were listening to them as they were praising and praising and, and praying to God. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so powerful that the very foundations of the prison were shaken and at once all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer, shaken out of sleep, saw the prison's doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, saying, Do not hurt yourself, we are all here. Then the jailer called for torches and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out of the inner prison, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then it goes on to, to share that, Paul and Silas told them about Jesus. He gave his life to Jesus. Then they end up going to his house and he, he, he helps them with their wounds and their whole, the whole household of the jailer comes to Jesus. He's baptized, they're all baptized. They all give their lives to Jesus. Wow, look at what God did when these two guys simply rejected fear and kept their faith and were united in their faith and praised to God to, and they praised God together. They prayed to God together with faith. Not, oh God, where are you? But God, you are good. You delivered us before. You delivered your people always in the past and I know you'll deliver us again. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering us now. I declare our freedom to come about, the inheritance that Jesus has given us. I declare that freedom now in Jesus' name. I declare by his stripes we are healed. These were the kinds of prayers that they were praying together, prayers full of faith and united together. That is why it is no coincidence that it says in both of these instances they were united together. In all of these instances, these are just a few of the many examples of the Bible of when people of God come together, united in faith, God's power moves mightily and overcomes the scheme of the devil. If they had not been united, full of faith, you would not have seen this miracle. If they had full of fear in that prison and were like, we're gonna die, they're gonna kill us, I'm telling you, that is what would happen. That is what would have happened. What you believe in is so powerful, positive or negative. If you believe in negative things, that negative things will happen to you, in other words, that's what fear is. Fear, you're, you're agreeing with that voice. You're thinking about it. What if this happens? What if that what if, what if becomes a this will, this will, this will happen. What you believe in will happen. Your faith is that powerful. It works good or bad. So if you are full of fear, then that is what's going to happen to you. What you're afraid of will happen to you. If you go to uh, Job... Job 3, verse 25. Job says, For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me, and that of which I am afraid has come upon me. The power, the power behind coronavirus is fear. That is what has made it as giant as it is today. That is what has kept us locked in our homes for so long. It is because people are afraid of it so much that it's making it to grow. 
When we rise up in faith, you will see it shrink and disappear and leave completely. The spirit of Antichrist is what is behind the coronavirus. Amen. The spirit of, anti, of the Antichrist. Uh, if you go to 1 John 4, verse 3, it says, Every spirit that doesn't confess Jesus is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and is now already in the world. It's already in the world, it says. Little children, believers, you are of God and you belong to him. And you have already overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist. Because he who is in you is greater than he, Satan, who is in the world. They who, they who teach twisted doctrine, voices of fear, are of the world and belong to it. Therefore, they speak from the viewpoint of the world with its immoral freedom and baseless theories, demanding compliance with their opinions and ridiculing the values of the upright. In other words, ridiculing the power of faith. But people are dying, but this is really scary. How can you have faith that this is going to just, God's going to make it go away? This is the spirit behind coronavirus. There is a loud voice that's screaming, this is scary. We should all be afraid. There's nothing been so scary like this ever before. We should all be so afraid completely. Like, as there's a voice speaking that the power of coronavirus is, that is greater than the power of God. That's the voice of the Antichrist coming out in the world. Coming as an angel of light. It's not like scary people with demon horns are saying, coronavirus is scary. No, it's coming disguised as this is really scary. We should all be really afraid. This is scarier than we realize. That's the voice of the Antichrist. Nothing is more powerful than God. Amen. There, he says, God did not give us a spirit of fear. So even when there is a virus that is apparently killing people, we are not called to be afraid. Amen. We are called to believe God will not kill me and God is going to destroy that. Amen. There's been damage the devil's inflicted, but it's done. When we rise up together in faith, God has called us to, to take authority in this world. We were called to have dominion and authority. Amen. This is the problem, is that many people don't know this and have forgotten that, that we are called to take dominion. People are giving up their dominion by giving in to the voice of fear. When the devil presents something scary, we are called to rise up in our place of authority, having dominion, and say, God did not give me a spirit of fear. I see what you're trying to do, devil. You have no power over me. Actually, I have power over you. This scheme of coronavirus that you're trying to scare us with, you will not scare me. You will not scare my nation. And your time is up. The damage that you've caused, it will not go on any further. You will not kill any more people. You are small and tiny, and I am not afraid of you. Coronavirus, get out. Devil, get out. Get out of my country. Amen. Get out of my city. Get out of my family. Get out of my life. You do not have power over me. Amen. God has given me healing and protection. Amen. So so what you're trying to threaten me with, it is all a lie. You're exposed. Amen. This is what we are called to do as believers. God called us to walk in dominion and authority. This is what walking in dominion and authority looks like. Amen. Not giving in to the voice of fear. When you do that, you are submitting yourself under the devil's authority. Yeah. The devil is having a field day right now mm -hmm. because believers have been paralyzed in their faith. They have lost their faith completely. Mm -hmm. He is having a field day. This is why the coronavirus has gone on for so long. This is an absolute word of God. 
that the devil is feasting over dead bodies, having fun because the believers are not taking their place, having authority and dominion. This could have ended long ago if believers would not have given in to the voice of fear. If we could stand together united in faith. And that's why God is coming strong today. He's saying, it's time. I'm screaming to you now, believers. I've shared this with you many times. Children of God, don't give into the voice of fear, but now you need to know. You need to know it's time for it to end today. Amen. But the only way it can happen is when you stand strong, united in faith together. That is the only way that the devil's power is no more. We see in the garden of Adam and Eve, they had authority and dominion, but the devil came and seduced them tricked them and and they handed over their authority and dominion to the devil they lost it completely so then they they went from them having power to now he has the power that's what's happening today jesus has given us the authority back to us he returned it to us when he came out of that grave it was returned back to us but it's not this magical thing where we just have authority and dominion naturally. We actually have to maintain it. We actually have to choose to not give in to fear and keep our faith and use our mouth. The devil is not hearing the positive confession of faith among the believers. So that's why he's allowed to keep on going right now. He's not hearing it. So, so believers have become his slaves. They've given the dominion to him. They've said, coronavirus is scary and it's, 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 it's ruling over us. You choose our destiny, coronavirus. It's up to you. It's up to you, invisible enemy. You decide where our future will be. Have you heard that voice? Have you heard the voice that say it's up to the coronavirus is the one that's in charge? Have you heard that voice coming in the news or the, the worldly voice, the spirit of Antichrist coming out? This is the spirit of Antichrist because the Antichrist wants to gain control over the world. How does the spirit of Antichrist do that? By paralyzing people with fear so that they give they lose their authority, they hand over their authority to him. That's how it happens. You can even see today there's a lot of people who are will willing to give up more freedoms more easily because they are so paralyzed with fear. It's messing with people's psychology. The devil, the antichrist spirit is messing with people's psychology where they're not even thinking clearly. They wouldn't give up their freedoms naturally if they weren't so paralyzed with fear. But this voice of antichrist, voice of fear, is making people not even able to think straight as they normally would have. Let's keep on reading here. Uh, 1 John 4, verse 3. Verse 6. He, we are from God, energized by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and whoever knows God through personal experience listens to us and has a deeper understanding of him. Whoever is not of God does not listen to us. By this we know, without any doubt, the spirit of truth motivated by God and the spirit of error motivated by Satan. 2 John verse 7, it says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge and confess the coming of Jesus. This, dece this is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you do not lose what we have accomplished together, but that you may receive a full and perfect reward. What we have accomplished together, believers, with our faith, the kingdom of God that we have expanded, let's watch ourselves that we don't give into this voice of fear. Let's watch ourselves that we recognize the voice of the Antichrist and don't give into it. Now, What's happening right now, we are not in the end times right now, but rather this is a, the devil is preparing the way for the Antichrist. 
as John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus, so is the devil sending the spirit of Antichrist to prepare the way for the Antichrist when he actually comes fully in the end times. So what he's doing right now is he is testing and seeing how easy it will be for him to control the world. He has this scheme, oh, I'm going to scare people with this coronavirus and I'm going to see if everyone, I, I know people of the world will give in to me, of course, but I will see even if I can get believers to give in to me. I want to see how easy it will be in the end times for me to even control them too, because I want to control the whole world. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. So he's testing now, seeing how easy it will be for him to control the world. So when we, when we don't put an end to this, when we keep on giving in to fear blindly, when we keep doing that and when we don't put an end to this by uniting together and having faith, then the devil will bring things that seem even scarier in a, in a way to control people. You'll see other types of things that will come different things that will be a, a way to control people more, monitor people more, take people's freedoms more. You'll see other things come, threaten. He's gonna, he will keep trying other things if we don't put a stop to this now. Amen. Listen, we're not in the end times now. God has made it so that the, the, devil, the devil will never have authority over us if we don't allow him. God has made it so that we have complete freedom in Jesus Christ, no matter what threatens us, no matter what leaders, what people, what spirit of Antichrist threatens us, they will never have power over us. They will never have power over our freedom as long as we don't allow it. Amen. Even when the Antichrist comes and takes over completely in the end times, the church will be raptured before that even happens. So there will never be a time, believers, when we will lose our freedom, unless we allow it. Unless we allow it. So this is not time to be afraid that we're losing freedoms, but it's time to watch out, as this says. Be watchful. Keep watch, it says so that you will not be succumbed, so that you won't fall into the trap that the Antichrist is trying to put. Believers, we have a responsibility. This isn't just about our personal health, our family's health, our family's protection from coronavirus. This is talking about the whole entire nation and world. Amen. Body of Christ, this is what God's calling us to. The only way that the coronavirus will end is if we unite together in faith. We have to do it together. It can't be just one person, just two people. It has to be all of us standing together in faith. That's the only way. This is a responsibility that we have. This is obedience to God right here. God is counting on us. You know, Satan asked, Asked, asked God if he could try Job. Job was this faithful servant of God. And he, he says, Satan says, I want to see if I take things away from him, if he'll still keep his faith. If he'll still praise you and he'll still believe that you'll come through for him and that you're good. I want to see if he'll give in to fear. I want to see. And God allows him to do this. Knowing how powerful Job's faith was and wanting to show us the power of faith that he wants us to have. That is possible. So Satan uh, took things away from Job and even made him to be sick. And through that, Job's faith did not fail. He's still praising God. Uh, Job 2 verse 7 Satan struck Job with loathsome boils and agonizingly painful sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And Job took a piece of broken pottery with which to scrape himself, and he sat down among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still cling to your integrity and your faith and trust in God without blaming him? 
curse God and die. This is what the wife said. The wife was, was being like, do you see the size of this coronavirus? It's bigger than your God, it looks like. God doesn't seem to be coming through. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. That's what she was doing to Job, trying to get Job to reject his faith, to deny his faith. But he said to her, you speak as one of the spiritually foolish woman speaks, ignorant and oblivious to God's will. Shall we indeed accept only good from God and not also accept adversity and when disaster sometimes strikes? In spite of all of this, Job did not sin with words from his lips. This is powerful. That's saying that if he had said, you're right, I'm going to forget God, curse God. I'm mad at him for doing this and I, I, I don't believe he'll ever come through for me. If he had done that, he would have died. He would have brought it upon himself. His wife said, curse God and die. And you see the whole family was killed off because their faith was gone. Their faith was paralyzed. They gave into fear. But Job through it all, even disaster, adversity that came upon him, he still did not lose his faith. He still believed that God was good. He still trusted that God had a plan in all of this, which indeed he did. He still trusted that God was going to work out all things for the good. He still believed and trusted that God would not forsake him, that he would deliver him from the illness, from the trouble, and that he would end up bringing healing to him and restoration and add on to him more than ever in his life. That's what he believed. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. Because what you believe in is what will happen. He was the one of his family that had such a strong faith that he survived through it all. And God added on to him. He healed him. He gave him back the things that were lost and added so much more. He gave him tons of other sons and daughters. He increased him more than at a higher place than he was before. All of this happened. But that would not have been the case if he had given up his faith. If he had given into the voice of fear. He would have not only received way more like he received, but he would have been dead. He would have given dominion to the devil and the devil would have had his way with him. That's what would have happened. He is, the devil is roaring around like a lion, like a lion, not a lion, like a lion. Jesus is the lion Amen. and you have the lion of Judah inside of you. You are one with the lion. So you have a like a lion and you have a lion. Which has more power? The lion. You have more power. But don't be deceived when someone's disguised as a lion. He's not really a lion. The Bible says that the devil roars around like a lion looking for who he can possibly devour. He is on the hunt right now, seeing whose faith is weak and who he can devour. Uh, Revelation 13 verse two, the beast I saw, now we're talking about, this is speaking about the Antichrist. Revelation 13 verse two, the beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like a lion. He is like a lion. He's looking for fearful people that he can devour. He terrifies people so that he can drag them any way that he wants because they are powerless and hopeless with no direction. There it is. It's laid out for us. He is like a lion. He has no power. He is not the lion. You are the lion with Jesus inside of you. It's time for you to not be deceived anymore, body of Christ. It's time to stand strong in faith. It's time to stand strong in faith. It's time to believe that God will deliver us. It is God's will for this coronavirus to end now 
for us to not have to be stuck in our homes forever. Amen. God wants churches to be packed and filled. Yes. He doesn't want this to continue for a year and 18 months. Yes. Don't give in to that voice of fear that is, that is being screamed. When we give in to that voice of fear, that is what will happen. That will be our future. But body of Christ, when we stand together united, this coronavirus will end like that. The devil will be defeated. God has revealed what the devil's scheme is. It's time for us to defeat him once and for all with this scheme of coronavirus, this scheme of the Antichrist. It is time for us to conquer him through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is time, body of Christ. Hallelujah. This is very important that everyone hears this message because it's not just one person or two people that can stand strong in faith. It's all of us. All of us believers. We must be strong. We must be spiritually alert and aware of what's going on in the spiritual realm. We have a prophetic rhema word, word of spoken, word spoken from God, straight from God. This is what God is speaking to you. We have a responsibility to obey God and stand together united in this faith, believing that God will overpower this coronavirus, speaking the word with our mouths. We need to pray together. Coronavirus, your time is up. Coronavirus, you have no power over me. You have no power over my nation. Coronavirus, you are laughable. I declare you to go to the pits of hell. You have no power over us anymore. You cannot keep us from worshiping worshiping God in church together, gathering together. You cannot keep us from hugging each other. You cannot keep us from kissing each other. You cannot keep us from holding hands. You cannot keep us from gathering together in fellowship. You cannot keep us from working. You cannot keep us from going to school. You cannot keep us from gathering together and bringing glory to God and worshiping God together. You cannot keep us from traveling. You cannot keep us from traveling across the world and ministering. Amen. You cannot keep us from this. You cannot keep us in bondage at all. We have freedom. Jesus has given us freedom. Freedom Amen. is ours. Yes. This is what we must declare together. Amen. You need to declare this yourself with your word. With these words, you need to speak out of your mouth. And we have a responsibility to share this message with all of the people we know. We have a responsibility because we have to do it together. This is a responsibility, church. God is speaking this to us today. If you want coronavirus to end, you need to get serious about what God is saying. Amen. You need to get serious about His will. Let's be about His will. Not the comforts of our flesh. Let's get serious about His will and his way, he does not want the coronavirus to go on. God does not want us to be stuck in our homes. God does not want the spirit of antichrist to go reigning around his people. God wants us to overpower the spirit. God wants us to raise up victorious and walk in his revival. But we cannot do this if we won't stand strong in faith and be united together. We cannot do this if we don't let our brothers and sisters know the word of God. So I urge you today to share this word to everyone you know. Why? Because it can't be just you and me. It has to be all of us. It's time for the church to wake up. We have the power. God has released the secret of defeating the coronavirus. It's not in the biggest scientists of the world. It's not in their knowledge. It's not in the medicine of this world. It lies in you and me. Mm -hmm. It lies in the faith that Jesus has deposited in you and me. Yeah. It says that Jesus gave us each a measure of faith. You have it inside of you. Release it. Use it. Speak. Speak, speak, speak. You might not feel this. It doesn't matter. Speak it. Amen. 
Speak the truth. And that is what God counts as faith. When you speak the truth. Because Job did not give in with his lips and sin, it says, he had victory and he did not receive affliction from the devil anymore. He received victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. So speak the word of God. Speak the truth right now in Jesus' name. Where you are in your homes, I want you to repeat after me. We are uniting together, saying this all together right now. Coronavirus, Coronavirus. your time is up. Your time, time is up. up. We send you. We send, we send you to the pit of hell, the pit of hell. Never, to never to return not a second wave, a second wave. Or, a or a third wave or a fourth wave, or a, fourth wave. A, no up, a no rising up of no peak no rising up of the peak you are going down and being ruined being killed forever you will not inflict our people you will not inflict our people anymore. anymore. You will not kill our people. You will not kill our people anymore. anymore. You do not have bondage over us. You do not have bondage over us. The chains are gone. The chains are gone. We have freedom. We have freedom in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. We, have we have authority in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. We, have we have dominion through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We, have we have the authority. Not you, Satan. Not you, Satan. Not you Antichrist. Not you, Antichrist. Not, you not you, Coronavirus. 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 You do not determine our future. You do not determine our freedom. You do not determine. Do not determine our, ability our ability to go to church, go to church and, praise God. and praise God. You do not have that power. You do not have that power. We have that power. We have that power. We send you to the pit of hell. We send you to the pit of hell. Your time is up. Your time is up. It is finished. It is finished. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I declare faith to arise in every single person watching right now. Amen. May this fire, may this anointing, may this passion of Jesus for his people to not be giving into the spirit of Antichrist. May this passion come in you now in Jesus' name. Amen. May you see the people suffering, this people sick, the people dying, and may you have a compassionate heart of God rise up in you. And an understanding, a spiritual awareness to see you have the power for this sickness to end. Amen. You have the power. May this awareness come to you now. May your eyes be open and may a fire and passion come inside of you. May a holy responsibility come inside of you. May a desire to obey God come inside of you right now. To never give in to the voice of fear. This is no different than the disciples in the boat who were terrified of the storm and Jesus was sleeping. And he says, where is your faith? Mm -hmm. They thought with the, the water was filling in their boats. That's the equivalent of seeing people sick and dying in the hospitals. That's the equivalent of seeing the, the leaders and everyone full of fear and saying, you have to stay in your homes. This is going to go on for 12 days, eight, 12 months, 18 months. This will never go away without a vaccine or herd immunity, that is the equivalent of the water filling up in the boat where the disciples were saying, Jesus, we're going to drown. Where are you? And Jesus was sleeping in the boat and he, and he says to the storm, peace be still. He wanted the disciples to actually take authority and say, peace be still. We have Jesus in our boat. We will not drown because of the storm. We have power over the storm. That's what he wanted. That's what he wants from you today. This is no different than that time in the boat with the storm and the water rising. You're experiencing the water rise. Do not give in to that voice of fear. Do not give in to that spirit of Antichrist anymore. Amen. Be obedient to God if nothing else. This is not about your feelings. This is not about, oh, but it's hard. Everyone's so full of fear. This is scary. This is not about your feelings anymore. This is about obeying God. You have the power inside of you to believe. You have the power. Amen. May this passion 
to be obedient to Jesus come inside of you right now in Jesus' name. And may this passion for the world to hear this message come alive inside of you today. May you have a heart for unity. May you have a heart to see this coronavirus end. May you have a heart to be a mature disciple who takes dominion and authority in Jesus' name. I speak life to every person watching right now. I speak healing to every person watching right now. I speak faith to arise in the whole body of Christ and I speak unity to happen. Revelation of our dominion in Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I declare the spirit of fear to get out. I deliver you. I free you in Jesus name. Some of you have been trembling with fear at night, shaking with fear. It's a spirit and I remove it now in Jesus name. Amen. Now fill yourselves with the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have it. You have the power. Let's rejoice because God has delivered us with this word. He's given us direction. Let's follow it. Let's rejoice that he has given us the answer. He has given us the cure to coronavirus church. You have it inside of you. We have it inside of you. Let's praise him. Let's rejoice for this victory, for our deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for our deliverance. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for being so good to give us this rhema word, this exact word. We thank you, Jesus. You are so good to give us this word, Father. And we commit to uniting together. Repeat after me. I commit to take this word of God seriously. More serious than anything in my life. This is life or death. This is the devil winning or Jesus winning? Jesus, winning. Jesus, must, win. Jesus must win. I will not disappoint Jesus. I will make him proud. I will carry this word to other people. I will let them know the cure. I will not keep this cure to myself. I will release it to the world. This world is healed in Jesus' name. It is healed in Jesus' name. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our King. Jesus is King of America. Jesus is King of LA. Jesus is King of this world. Devil, you have no power. Your time is up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.